In this lecture, we're going to look at the elemental analysis of organic compounds. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to explain what is meant by the term empirical formula. And you should also be able to carry out empirical formula calculations from the results of elemental analysis. Right, so far in Unit 2, we've covered molecular structure, molecular orbitals, stereochemistry, and the huge synthesis section. So we've just got experimental determination of structure and the very short pharmaceutical chemistry left to do. So today we're going to look at the start of the experimental determination of structure. Now, as you might have noticed in the organic synthesis experiments you've done so far, that very often in organic chemistry you end up with a white powder or a colourless liquid. There's not a huge amount of colour or variety in the looks of these organic compounds. So the question is how do we find out definitively what the structure of the compound we made is? Okay. And that's the question we're going to answer by looking at the experimental, to experimental determination of structure. And we're going to use four different techniques, or at least learn about four different techniques, which will allow us to get a white powder and actually find out what the structure of the compound is. We're going to look at elemental analysis, mass spectrometry, infrared spectroscopy, and NMR. Now, not one of these techniques on its own is probably not enough to determine the structure of your compound, but if you combine them very often you can get a definitive answer to the question, what have I made? Today we're going to look at elemental analysis. So what is elemental analysis? Well, basically it tells you how much of each element you have in your unknown compound. You'd weigh out a known amount of your sample and then burn it in that excess of oxygen. So any carbon that is in your sample will be converted into carbon dioxide. So by measuring the volume of carbon dioxide produced, you can work out how much of your sample is carbon. Or the hydrogen in your sample will turn into H2O. So by measuring the quantity of H2O produced, you can work out how much hydrogen is in your sample. And for most organic compounds, they tend to be made up of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. The oxygen we just find out by difference. So if we know we burnt one gram of the sample, we found out 0.8 grams of that was carbon, 0.1 grams was hydrogen, then the remaining 0.1 gram must be the oxygen. Occasionally you will get other elements in your organic sample. For example, if you had sulphur, you would know because you produce sulphur dioxide gas. And by measuring the volume of sulphur dioxide gas, you know how much sulphur is in your sample. And sometimes you'll have nitrogen in your sample. The analysis for the nitrogen is a wee bit more complicated because on, on combustion, you'll produce a range of nitrous of nitrogen oxide gases nitrogen monoxide nitrogen dioxide nitrogen trioxide these then get reduced to nitrogen and hence we can by measuring the volume of nitrogen produced we can work out the mass of nitrogen in our original sample so by elemental analysis we'll get the mass of each of the elements present in our sample and from that we can work out something called the empirical formula. So the result of our elemental analysis will be to get the empirical formula. Okay. So for example if it was ethene that was our unknown sample our empirical formula would come out at CH2 so it's not actually the molecular formula of ethene, it's just telling us the simplest ratio 
of one element to another in that sample. We need further information, usually obtained from mass spectrometry, to determine the gram formula mass of the sample to allow us to convert the empirical formula into a molecular formula. So for mass spectrometry, we might be told that the gram formula mass of the sample was 28 grams. That only comes to 14 grams. So if we know our gram formula mass is 28 grams, we've got to keep that one carbon to two hydrogen ratio. So the molecular formula must be C2H4. So in itself, the elemental analysis just gives you this empirical formula, but you then use it in combination with the results from the other techniques to work out the actual molecular formula. Okay, let's try a few simple examples. Okay, so elemental analysis of an organic compound revealed that it contained 1.2 grams of carbon, 0.3 grams of hydrogen, and 0.8 grams of oxygen determine its empirical formula. Okay, so we've got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So carbon, we've got 1.2 grams. Hydrogen, 0.3 grams. And oxygen, 0.8 grams. So there's a nice sort of set technique you can use that will convert that into an empirical formula. First thing you do is divide each of these masses by the relative atomic mass of the, of the atom. So for carbon it's 12. So 1.2 divided by 12 is going to give me 0 0.1. For hydrogen, the relative atomic mass is 1. So 0 0.3 divided by 1 will be 0 0.3 and for oxygen it's 16 so 0 0.8 divided by 16 is 0 0.05 okay. check those numbers are right yep then what we do is we look at these three numbers we identify which one is the smallest so in this case, 0 0.05 is the smallest number. So what we then do is divide each number by the smallest. So divide by smallest, which in this case is 0 0.05. So 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.05 is 2. 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.05 is 6. And 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.05 is 1. So our empirical formula then is C2H6O. Okay. This may or may not be the same as the molecular formula. We won't know that until we've done mass spectrometry on this sample. Okay, another way they might ask this question is, Elemental analysis of an organic compound revealed that it contained 57.9% carbon, 8.4% hydrogen, and 33.7% nitrogen to determine its empirical formula. So it doesn't matter if they tell you the, uh, the makeup by mass or by percentage, you do it the exact same way. So we've got carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. We've got 57.9% of that, 8.4% hydrogen, 33.7% nitrogen. So, divide by relative atomic mass. So, 57.9 divided by 12 comes to 4.82. 8.4 divided by 1, 8.4. 33.7 divided by 14 is 2.4. Identify the smallest number. It's the 2.4. And we divide through by the smallest number. So 4.82 divided by 2.4 is 2. 
8.4 divided by 2.4 is 3.5 and 2.4 divided by 2.4 is 1. So the empirical formula would be two carbons, three and a half hydrogens and one nitrogen. Now you don't leave your empirical formula to still be whole numbers. So in order to get the hydrogen to be a whole number, we're going to need to multiply by two, everything by two. So to make it four, seven, two. So our empirical formula is C4, H7, N2. Okay. You only like say, to see it come out as a, a whole number, a 0.5 or maybe a 0.333. I think they're the only ones you're likely to come across. Okay, now, those two are quite simple examples and at advanced higher you're more likely to get the harder type of example to do if it comes up in the exam. So we've got one more example showing like, the hardest way of ask, answer, asking this question. So, compound X containing only carbon, hydrogen and oxygen was subjected to elemental analysis. Complete combustion of 2.53 grams of X gave 5.76 grams of CO2, 2.36 grams of water, and no other product was formed. Okay. So they've kind of taken it back a step, and instead of telling you how much carbon, hydrogen, oxygen there is, they've just given you the amount of CO2 and water produced, and asking you to work it out. So we're told we've got 5.76 grams of carbon dioxide. From that, we need to be able to work out the mass of carbon in the sample. So, the mass of carbon, well, we've got 5.76 grams of carbon dioxide. Right? And of that carbon dioxide, well, the gram formula mass is 44. And of those 44 grams, 12 grams is carbon. So if we multiply this by the amount of carbon over the gram formula mass, we'll get what amount of the 5.76 grams is actually due to carbon. And that comes out at 1.57 grams. Well, that kind of makes sense. You're right. If all of that's carbon dioxide, roughly a third of it is carbon. So the answer should be roughly a third of that, which it is. So you can kind of do a sort of estimate beforehand of what your answer should come out as. Right, we're told we've got 2.36 grams of water. From that we should be able to work out how much hydrogen we've got. So mass of hydrogen. So 2.36 grams of water. You know, so again, try estimating your answer. If your answer ends up as 5 grams of hydrogen, you know you've done something badly wrong. You've only got 2.36 grams of water. So, and uh, only a small amount of that's going to be hydrogen because uh, water is mainly made up of the oxygen. The hydrogen's a very small component. So, I'd be worried if my answer came out at, you know, uh, anything more than one gram. That'd be obviously very wrong. So, we've got 2.36. So, we'll multiply it by... The, the mass of hydrogen in the water, H2O, so the mass of hydrogen is 2 over the gram formula mass, which is 18. So that comes out at 0 0.262 grams, which seems about sensible. Okay, now what to do? Well, we're told that the compound contains carbon, hydrogen and oxygen only. So we know we've got that amount of carbon, we know we've got that amount of hydrogen, so the rest must be oxygen. So the mass of oxygen, well, we started off with 2.53 grams of the sample. 1.57 of that is oxygen. That was the oxygen, not oxygen, sorry, carbon. 
take away the 0.262 grams which was the hydrogen and by difference we work out that the mass of oxygen is 0 0.698 grams okay, so that amount of oxygen that amount of hydrogen and that amount of carbon so that's the extra step that you're likely to have to do at advanced higher level. Okay? Work out the mass of carbon from the CO2, the mass of hydrogen from the water, and the mass of oxygen by difference. Now we know those masses, we'll just carry out the calculation just the exact same way as the simple ones shown in examples 1 and 2. So, we've got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen so the carbon had been 1.57 grams the oxygen sorry the hydrogen 0 0.262 and the oxygen 0 0.698 divide by the rate of atomic masses and we get 0 0.131 0 0.262 and 0 0.046 identify the smallest number it's the oxygen so divide through by the smallest and we get three for the carbon six for the hydrogen and one for the oxygen so our empirical formula C3 H6O okay. okay so from elemental analysis we get an awful lot of information okay we can determine the empirical formula which as you'll see as we move on is a huge help in trying to work out the structural formula of our unknown white powder So you should now be able to explain what is meant by the term empirical formula and you should be able to carry out empirical formula calculations from the results of elemental analysis.